Hey guys, I'm Aburu and welcome back to World of Warships. Today we'll be looking at the new Japanese Tier 5 aircraft carrier, the Zoiho or the Zuho. It is one of five new aircraft carriers in the Japanese tech tree from the 0.3.1 update. The key differences really between the Japanese and American carriers is the planes. Now with the planes with the Japanese you have more squadrons, so you have more units to actually use. Uh, but they have smaller amounts of planes than the Americans. The American Tier 4 aircraft carrier, for instance, has um, up to two planes at any one time, and the Japanese equivalent, the Hosho, has three. So the Japanese have two less planes per squadron, um, but they have more of them. The Americans have five or six planes per squadron, but they have less of them. So this really makes the Japanese carriers more tactical, more strategic. It means you can um, put one of your torpedo bombers as sort of bait uh, to lure the enemy into a certain angle so you can release another torpedo bomber to do a full spread of torpedoes to do a substantial amount of damage and hopefully knock them out. Okay, so let's get to the main stats of the Zoiho, the Tier 5 Japanese carrier. So the first stat is survivability and we have 45 out of 100. That's 36,500 health. That is identical to the, uh, the Bogue, the new American uh, Tier 5 carrier. Now this carrier, as most of the carriers in the game, has pretty terrible armour. It has slightly better though than the Bogue. The armour is 9mm to 20mm thick of armour pretty much everywhere. So this thing has similar armour to a destroyer. It can very easily be penetrated by high explosive. Usually when you're against any low tier aircraft carriers, the best thing to do is to fire high explosive. Um, armour piercing will go straight through and do very minimal damage. I've had a game in my tier 7 Japanese cruiser, the Miyoko, against this particular ship. I fired a full broadside of high explosive and I've done two citadel hits and I've nearly knocked it out in just a couple of broadsides. So this thing is very weak, but of course aircraft carriers, they're not well known for their armour, they're not very well known for their health, they're very well known for their ability to use planes and to hide. Now this, this particular ship has a very high concealment stat, which I'll get to in a moment. The second stat of an aircraft carrier is aircraft, and this one has up to four squadrons, and we have four planes per squadron. We have a hangar capacity of 30 units, so that's 30 planes in total. When the hangar capacity has been depleted, you can no longer use your planes. You have to use your planes very sparingly. 30 units isn't an awful lot for an aircraft carrier, so you have to be very careful how you use your planes in this ship. So I have two potential loadouts for this ship. I could choose the fighter two torpedo bombers and one dive bomber. I've chosen the latter, which is the three torpedo bombers and one dive bomber. This loadout is definitely the most aggressive of the two. It means I have no defensive capabilities. It means I'm going full attack and no defense. Now, the aircraft stat is slightly better than the Bogue. The Bogue only has 15, so we have a slight advantage there. Now the next stat is artillery firepower, and with all aircraft carriers, you have no main armament, you only have secondary armament, which you don't control directly, but you can assign um, your ship to target ships near you. And of course, it targets ships automatically when they're within range of your secondary armament. There are only a few American carriers that have a secondary armament as a defensive measure, but with Japanese carriers, it seems that all of them have a secondary armament um, of some kind to defend the ship. So you see here we have 4x2 127mm guns. Now these secondary armament guns act as both anti-ship guns and anti-plane guns. And that's very important for this ship because the anti-air capability isn't particularly good at only 30. The American carriers tend to be much better in terms of anti-air capability. It's good to mention as well that the maximum range of these guns is only 4km. So it's very good against destroyers when they get within close distance in the later game. Um, very good as a defensive measure. Playing this thing I've killed multiple ships just using the secondary armament and focusing on destroyers when they're within very close proximity in the later stages of the match. Now that is your only defensive measure when you're only one of a very few amount of ships in the late game, so it's always good. So the next stat is anti-air capability. Now I did lightly touch up on it that it's not very good. 30 isn't quite as good as the Bogue, for instance, has 37. Now going up the tiers from here on in, the Americans have a much better anti-air capability than the Japanese, but the Japanese have other advantages such as more squadrons and a higher base concealment. So the anti-air capability of this ship can shoot down some planes when they're within close proximity, when they're a bit more dangerous in the later stages of a match. We have these guns here which only fire within 3 kilometers, so the enemy planes have to get really close for you to actually effectively destroy them. And the dual purpose guns which act as both anti-ship guns and anti-plane guns. So the next stat of this ship is maneuverability and we have 43 out of 100. This thing can go quite fast at up to 28 knots. Um, it does however have a very poor turning circle radius at 810 meters. So it's very sluggish when it turns round. It has a rudder shift time, however, of 12.6 seconds. So not overly fast and not overly slow. It seems about average. So 43 for a carry is all right. Of course, your primary role is to attack enemies with planes. 
and to kite the enemy. And of course you have the speed in this thing to kite enemies, but you can't turn very far. So in the later stages when you're against destroyers, when they're within close proximity, you have to hope to God that your secondary armament hits the destroyers and knocks them out. Um, that turning circle radius doesn't really do you any favours in the late game. And I've died multiple occasions in this thing because of the poor turning time. And the last stat is concealment, which Japanese carriers tend to be very good at. This ship is surface detectability range of 8.5 kilometers and air detectability range of 8 kilometers. So that's quite good. Of course, you have the advantage of kiting the enemy. So you're on one side of the map while your allies are engaging the enemies on the other side of the map. So you have the advantage there. Uh, you won't be spotted for a very long time in this ship until the later stages of the match, um, by which time you'll probably have destroyers surrounding you and you have to hope to God that your secondary armament works. So the stats of the Zoiho are quite good. The key aspects really are the increased amount of squadrons and the concealment. Uh, it's got some good stats overall. Okay, so let's look at the modules of the Zoiho. As you can see, we have quite a lot of nice upgrades we can purchase. Unfortunately, no torpedo bomber upgrades or no engine upgrades, but we'll make do with these. So the first upgrade you could choose is either the customization upgrade, which is this one here, uh, the hull upgrade, the fighter bomb upgrade, or the dive bomb upgrade. Now, I would definitely go with the hull upgrade to start, plus 1,000 health, and plus five to anti-air capability. Now this is very important when you have enemy fighters chasing down your planes uh, and when your ship is within close distance, your ship can very easily shoot them down. So the increase in anti-air capability really comes in handy. Now the second upgrade I would choose is a hull upgrade. Again, you have an increase of anti-air capability again of plus three and you have a maneuverability increase of plus four. So your rudder shift time is reduced by five seconds. So after you have the second hull upgrade, you don't have to upgrade anything else. You can go straight for the tier 6 Rujo, uh, but I, however, did go straight for the upgrades. And the third one I would choose, you have a choice of how powerful you are versus ships or how powerful your fighters and dive bombers are. Now the third upgrade I would choose is the fighter upgrade, increases the fighter's maximum speed by 8 knots and survivability of 190. So yes, you have a loadout decrease of 11, but when you have the same DPS, increased speed and higher um, survivability, I would definitely choose this one next. And of course the increase in fighter capability makes you more competent versus enemy torpedo bombers and enemy dive bombers. I've noticed a lot of um, Japanese ships just go with torpedo bombers and dive bombers, completely foregoing fighters. When you have this upgrade with the first mod, which is the standard default mod, you have that fighter squadron, which is really good at taking down enemy torpedo bombers and dive bombers. Now this is really the trump card, is to use the first one here, ignore the second upgrade, and go straight for the fighter upgrade. So when you're against enemy squadrons of pure dive bombers and torpedo bombers, you have a, a massive advantage. The last one, you have either a choice of minus one fighter and plus one torpedo bomber, or the increase in speed and survivability of the dive bomber. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. I, I personally chose this one first, which is the flight control. The dive bomber just has an increase in health and an increase in speed. And you only have one of them per squadron, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, so they're the upgrades of the Zoiho. Unfortunately, no torpedo bomber upgrades, um, no increased damage, nothing like that. Not until the next tier, which is tier 6. So I have chosen some credible upgrades. The first one I've chosen here is the Air Group's Modification 1, which is plus 10% to aircraft guns effectiveness. Of course, this mod only works with fighters, of which I only have one. So if I let my fighters die quickly, then this is utterly useless. It's good to use your fighters carefully, and they do go very fast at 134 knots, so... If you're quite careful, you can keep them alive for most of the match. Now, the second mod I've chosen here is the Flight Control Modification 1, which is minus 10% to aircraft servicing time. Now, with Japanese carriers, you have a much faster servicing time than the American equivalent. That's because you have less planes per squadron. So you have that advantage of sending one out, it comes back, and then it's ready in about 15 seconds, as opposed to the Americans, 30 seconds. So this isn't necessary, in my opinion, for the Japanese. It is definitely for the Americans, but I chose it anyway to further decrease my aircraft servicing time. And the third one I've chosen here is a defensive measure one. It's damage control system modification one, minus 3% chance of flooding and minus 5% chance of fire. I did mention this thing has very weak armor. It can be set on fire quite quickly. And of course, that minus 5% chance of fire does help against high explosive rounds. And in the later game, when you get hit by enemy torpedo bombers and destroyers, the minus 3% chance of flooding does come in handy as well. 
So the Japanese carriers are very interesting ships, very unique in this game, having so many squadrons. Yes, your squadrons are very easily killed if the enemy focuses them down. You have that massive advantage in terms of tactics and strategy. You can very easily bait your enemies with the massive amounts of squadrons with the Japanese carriers. You can bait the enemy into thinking you're going one way and then appear out of nowhere with the rest of your planes and very easily do a massive amount of damage, which I will show you in the replay. So the Zoiho and the other Japanese carriers are very good. Let me show you a game in the Zoiho. Okay, so this is the new Japanese Tier 5 aircraft carrier, the Zoiho, on Big Race Standard Battle. So typical of all aircraft carrier gameplay in this game, it's all bird's eye view, very much like a sort of strategy game, uh, like a real-time strategy, much like StarCraft or whatever. So in this game, I did choose the customization where I have three torpedo bombers and one dive bomber. And as you can see there, we have predominantly um, battleships, two carriers on each team, and one destroyer on each team. So I chose three torpedo bombers and one dive bomber. That's the second upgrade. Um, usually the one I would choose is one fighter, two torpedo bombers, and one dive bomber. Now I'm going north here to hopefully avoid the enemy um, fighters. I know the enemy fighters tend to go south at the start of battle, well most people tend to. I'm going up north to where the battleships spawn um, to hopefully knock one out. So there's two ways of deploying your torpedo bombers in this game. The first way is manually by clicking the enemy and it does like a forecast way. Uh, the second way is more interesting, which is this way, which is a uh, the alt key, where you fire a prescribed location where you want them to go exactly. You judge where the enemy is going to be, fire your torpedoes, and it should hit them. So I'm letting loose my torpedoes now. Of course, we have four planes per squadron, so four torpedoes maximum. First one's coming in. Looks really good. Four torpedoes straight hit. A lot of damage there. 16,000 damage. Three more coming in. Of course, one of our planes were knocked out there, so we only had three available torpedoes, and the rest of ours miss. The Allied did get some in as well, so in total of two of my squadrons and one of my allies, we managed to get 10 torpedo hits, which is a massive amount. As you can see, the battleship is very low at this point, and my ally is about to finish him off, and there we are. One battleship destroyed as quickly as that when we focus target one ship. So now in the aircraft carrier, we have to play the waiting game. So all of our planes go back. They all have to go to my carrier and reload. Um, with Japanese carriers, though, it's a lot faster than the Americans because of the smaller squadrons. Um, it's about cut by half. So it does take some time for them to reload, to be ready to fly again. But when they're ready, we can choose a target and go again. So seeing what my allies do here it is, as you can see, very much a battleship game. So it's a lot of heavy ships versus heavy ships. So Hotspot's a low tier match. And usually when enemies go towards... Um, sort of F4, or in that little corner where this is here, where the battleships are. Um, they're very susceptible to damage from torpedoes, but we have no destroyers in this match, so it's very open for the taking. We have one cruiser heading there. Um, I'm tempted at this point to dispatch one of my um, torpedo bombers to go there to hopefully screw with him to assist my cruiser ally. So this is the point where I see the fighter. I see the fighters coming in close to where my um, torpedo bomb is going, so I'm sending my um, three torpedo planes elsewhere. My three torpedo planes are now available at the north of the map where most of the enemy battleships are lurking. You can control the planes individually um, to fire at different locations, which I often do to lure the enemy into thinking I'm going one direction, whereas I'm actually going a completely different direction. So at this point I see his carriers there with no protection from any fighters. He's a prime target and he's going very, very slow. So I'm ignoring the battleships at the moment. He's a susceptible target. I'm doing all three of my torpedo bombers to fire at the same location. When I press the all key, they all fire in the same rough general direction. They look very good. And this guy's about to eat a lot of torpedoes. So in they come. A lot of torpedoes. There we are. Four hits. Five hits. Six hits. And a lot of damage. Unfortunately, we missed by the last amount and we didn't finish him off. One more hit would have got him. He is flooding quite a lot. If I had my dive bomber available at that point, I would have been able to finish him off, but unfortunately I didn't. So the enemy battleships are pushing through at the moment to where me and my allied carrier are, so I'm trying to move to a different location to be more safe. Now the detectability of this ship is quite good at 8.5km, but if enemy plane comes within distance, I will be spotted, and with the massive range of the enemy battleships, I will be knocked out very easily. I did just lose a squadron there from uh, the enemy fighters. That's one of the disadvantages, really, of having the full um, bomber loadout instead of the uh, one fighter and the three bombers. So I did just lose one there. In terms of the match, we are winning at the moment, which is always good. Uh, they have pretty much all their battleships available. They lost one cruiser and two battleships, and obviously they have the carriers up as well. 
So my plane is landing now. We have two which are ready to take off, but I'm not taking off now. If I take off now when the fight is there, it's a very silly thing to do. So I'm focusing him down with my anti-air capability by doing the uh, control click onto him. And all my anti-air capability of the ship focuses him down. Um, he only has four planes per squadron, so he is Japanese. There goes one. Of course, it's very silly to release the planes at this point. Um, if you do, you will lose all of them. And of course, I only have two planes in backup, as you can see next to the R button, which is the repair. Uh, it shows you how many backup planes you have if you lose planes from your squadrons. I have two there. I have no more dive bombers available, unfortunately. Uh, they have all been knocked out, so I'm limited now to only three torpedo bombers. So now that the uh, enemy fighter has moved on, he's thinking of a better target to go somewhere else, um, I'm going to help defend the cap. Now there's two enemy battleships capping at this point and two more behind them. Um, I'm very close, so I'm taking some damage, but I need to take these guys out. They need to take some damage. I need to stop the cap at this point. There's two capping, so the cap point is going over quite quickly. I have one focusing on one and one focusing on another. So I did just lose two planes there, so he's going to go back and replenish those. But after that, I can't replenish any more planes. So with the very, very fast turn rate of the new American battleships, he did manage to avoid that. I did a second broadside of torpedoes. In they come towards the um, enemy battleship. And my third one is now coming in. This looks like a really good shot. In they go. We got two hits there for 9,000 damage, and we defended the base, and we caused a flooding. The most important thing here is that we defended the base. We have another spread of torpedoes coming in now, which we did unfortunately miss. Uh, but now I need to flee and land as quickly as possible before the enemy fighter takes us down. So I'm being pretty much nuked from every direction now. I did manage to save the cap for a while, and there are two enemy fighters trying to nuke down my bomber. Now these fighters are American, so they have lots and lots of planes, and they're very hard to knock out. I did manage to take out another one, and I'm using my torpedo bomber to take down uh, hopefully this battleship. There are some allied battleships coming back to defend, which is always good. Um, we haven't quite savored the cap. There are still a few points we need to diminish, um, but my allies are there to hopefully finish them off. So the enemy fighter that's been sort of duking out with my um, torpedo bombers has nearly been diminished completely. He's only got one fighter left, uh, which isn't an awful lot, so he's kind of useless at this point. Of course, when you engage torpedo bombers with fighters, they lose accuracy, um, so they're good even if they have one, but in terms of shooting down power, they ha they're very limited. So I'm coming in now with another spread of torpedoes, coming to hopefully destroy this enemy uh, battleship. He is still capping. Not an awful lot of cap points, though, because he has been sort of uh, taken down. So in they go. Wyoming does turn very fast. There you go. One. We did unfortunately miss the second, but we did get around 4,000 damage, which is all right, and we did induce flooding. Now, when you induce flooding with uh, torpedoes, um, of course, the, it's like a tick of damage. It does a bit more damage than fire damage, so it all adds up. So at this point I only have two squadrons available um, and none in backup. So I did lose one torpedo bomber completely and a dive bomber. So I have two torpedo bombers available. One is coming in now with only three planes and the other one is landing. So I need to try and knock out this guy. Um, he's still capping or attempting to cap, um, but he's within very close distance of my allied battleship and I want to try and help the team as much as possible by knocking him out. But before I manage to get there, the allied carrier managed to send his a torpedo bomber to finish him off. At this point we're winning by a very large margin. All our battleships have done their job and we've pretty much nuked the whole enemy. We've done quite well in this match. Uh, there's a New York there. Um, we only have two planes in this squadron, but we're going to do them anyway. There they go. Two torpedoes coming down. Of course it's only one torpedo per plane in the squadron. So the American squadrons are more deadly. We got one hit there for 3,800 damage, which is quite good. And this guy's being nuked to hell by my allied battleships. So a good way to use aircraft carriers in my opinion is to send one to attack um, and then wait for it to come back and then send another one. That's mainly because of the wait times. If you send all your planes out in one go and they all come back in one go, you have to wait a very long time for your planes to come back. So I'm sending my squadron here straight towards this battleship. He's at a slightly of a weird angle so I'm going to try and engage him anyway. Um, but at this point in the match it's only him and the enemy carrier left. We have a massive advantage in terms of score, um, and we're capping. Uh, this guy is in a lot of trouble. We're going to try and engage him anyway, but there is a fighter there. Now, fighters are a big problem. When they're within close proximity of your plane and they're engaging them, uh, your torpedo bomber loses accuracy. And now this is what this is. Uh, this is an accuracy loss when the spread gets bigger. There's no 
guarantee where the torpedoes will go and they will spread in very weird uh, angles as you could see. Now I'm trying to get this guy away, I'm trying to get my torpedo bomb away from this guy. I know he won't make the journey back to my uh, carrier so I'm trying to get him over to the allied battleships so they can use their anti-air capability to hopefully knock him out. He's only got a couple of planes left and if one of the allied battleships gets lucky he'll be able to knock him out. So I want to savor those two planes just in case something weird happens, just in case they savor the cap. So I'm leaving my plane next to the allied battleship there at the moment so uh, hopefully the enemy plane gets knocked out. He's, I think he sees what I'm doing there and he flees but my second round are coming in now, second lot of um, torpedo bombers are coming around this corner but they're at a weird angle. New York's coming in there, but we lost one plane there and we lost the second. Very easy to get planes knocked out by the new American battleships because of their pretty good anti-air capability. So I did lose two there and the only planes I have available in this match are two and they're going back to my carrier to replenish before the end of the match. So it does seem like we're going to win on cap points. We did do very well in this match in terms of how many torpedoes we got. We got 18 torpedo hits, which is a massive amount. Admittedly, the damage potential isn't particularly high uh, for those torpedoes, but of course it all racks up, it all adds up. We did manage to knock out that battleship, so the only uh, enemy left is the enemy carrier, and of course they have no armor, so he's going to get ripped to shreds. One broadside in, and he's lost a third of his health. Um, my planes won't make it in time, but I reload them anyway, and I send them this way just in case... Uh, you never know if my allies are going to hit them or not. We're capping at this point. He only has a couple of planes at his disposal. Usually in the late games when you're playing the new Japanese um, carriers, you tend to lose planes very quickly. So my allies are firing broadsides here, missing over and over again. But we're going to capture the base. And there we are. So we've got 220,000 credits, 4,300 experience, 200 free experience, 18 torpedo hits, one dive bomber hit, 16 planes shot down, one critically damaged, one set on fire. We flooded six targets and we defended the base twice. In terms of the team, we came second with 1,900 base experience and here comes the damage. So with torpedoes, we got 81,000 damage with 18 torpedoes. With the dive bomber hit, we managed to get nearly 2,000 damage. With the flooding induced, which was from the torpedoes, we did nearly 10,000 damage. So in this game we got nearly 95,000 damage, which is a massive amount for a tier 5 ship. Yeah, so this has been the new tier 5 Japanese aircraft carrier, the Zoiho. The new Japanese aircraft carriers in the game are really something not to mess with. They have a massive advantage in terms of tactics and strategy over the Americans, just with the increased amount of squadrons. The squadrons are very susceptible to enemy fighters, however. So if you get cornered, if a fighter comes within close proximity of your planes, uh, the squadron is pretty much gone. Now this ship, however, does lack in terms of hangar capacity. 30 is not an awful lot, especially when you have planes dying here, there and everywhere. So I highly recommend the new Japanese aircraft carriers from 0.3.1, uh, the Hosho, the Zoiho and so on. They're a lot of fun to play with and they're very fearsome. So keep your eyes peeled for tomorrow, guys. I will probably be streaming at some point in the afternoon or evening. I also have a couple more ship reviews to look at this week, including the Miyoko and probably a low tier roundup of all the sort of low tier uh, premium ships in the game. I'll probably do a video about that on the weekend. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.